Okay. Now this 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 one is going to be the messiest arrival of sufficient competent evidence in genealogy that you'll probably ever find. And it, it's it's better proof than some of the other things that I had, even though it's going to be very very messy. Now there is. To make a long story short, my um, great great grandmother was, you know, her name was Alfield Burgess, and she married a man named John Stewart Chichester, and he was the son of Alfred Augustus Chichester. And they divorced by 1930. They were married probably around 1912, you know, if I remember right. And they were divorced by 1930. My grandfather passed away in 78. You know, when I was about eight years old, you know, was born in 1913. Now, after they divorced, Alfield, of course, kept her own personal genealogical records with her. And for whatever reason, she also had, at least because she lived in the household with, with her husband's dad, you know, his information for, you know, the mom and dad. So basically by the time I got the records in the, in the 1980s, I had a clear outline of all of my grandfather's grandparents and even their great grandparents were all listed down on a, on a, a, a like, a, like a family chart. My step great grandmother who um, ended up marrying Alfield's second husband after she died uh, was, was of the Mormon faith and you know so she kept all those records and Albert kept them after Alfield had died and they were, they were handed to me and every single one of those records with the exception of Alfield's mother her parents and her was I able to verify everything else I wasn't able to verify at least as far as parentage is concerned and her parentage is, a, is an important this is the primary assertion we're dealing with here. We want to prove who our parents are for, you know, you know we don't want to be going up the wrong family trees, you know. So, um, the name I was given was Florence Dorothea McLehy was, was her name. And as far as, of all the, of all the descendants of Florence Dorothea McLehy, of my generation, there's only two of them, me and, me and my sister her two children, my mother, my uncle, and those are the only people who are still living that, that descend from, from the person I was told was Dorrance, Florence Dorothea McLehy. And I'm the only person doing the, doing the research. Okay, so I, I put up some notes, and um, I was also given the information that her father's name was supposedly Moses Riles, and mother's name was Revisa Mitchell. Well, Not only could I not find any census records for any McLehys that was spelled the way it was given to me, which was Mick, L-A-Y-H-E-Y, but I couldn't find any Moses Riles anywhere. I couldn't find any Revisa Riles anywhere. And so I thought she was adopted and maybe, who knows, they got the Moses Riles and Revisa Mitchell wrong and... She didn't know who her parents were and just made that up, and she ended up in Kankakee, Illinois, off of a, some adoption train and was adopted by the McGahee family, or the McLehy family, but I couldn't find any records from McLehy, so I figured it must be McGahees. And, um, and the reason why I figured it was McGahee was because her, her son's death record lists her her maiden name as McGahee, not, not McLehy. Meanwhile, on her death certificate, it lists her father as, as Riles, and her last name is Riles, and mother's last name is, is Mitchell. So I, I, I couldn't get any further, and I was starting to look and see if I can get any records out of the, uh, let's see, the New York Orphans Asylum, because they were said to go over there, but, you know, if, the records didn't seem to be that complete. You know, there's no databases to search online of children that were in these asylums. No scanned records. Just seemed like a dead end. And I gave up. Last thing I decided to do is just look at 
Ancestry's one world tree entries at one point and just see you know, maybe someone's got something in the notes maybe someone's figure something out take a look and I see a message about um, hi I'm a relative of Florence Dorothy McLehy it said it said that I know her as Dora Skiles and uh, she um, I also found a record of uh, James D. Skiles getting out of prison and she was going to go to live with her his sister Florent F. Burgess at Plymouth, Indiana. And Doris Skiles' father's name was Moses Skiles and mother's name was Loviza Mitchell. And I thought, well this has got to be right. There's, you know, <laughs> and it was. And it was right. And um, now, how did that all come together? Probably the only way that uh, Dan Norton's a very good genealogist. Um, very good. And sometimes there are some situations where, where, where people just don't have the records to move forward, and uh, he, he acted very, very proactive in that situation. I, I still wouldn't have a clue as to be able to go forward if he didn't proactively he tried to, I think he tried to figure out who was the person that put all these notes in his family tree. And there were other people that copied my notes, put them in their family trees. I don't know why anybody would want Florence's notes in their family tree because there, there really are no other living descendants of either Edwin Cyrus Burgess or Florence McLeahy. But nonetheless, someone's copying my notes and putting them in their tree. And so, so. Dan try to contact whoever that is. I don't know who that is. I still don't know who that is. And um, that person didn't know what to do with the message. Put put those notes into the message from Dan into their One World Tree entry maybe about a month ago, month and a half ago. Now it's February 2011. And um, then I... I happened to look at their notes and I saw the message so the message that you know, he was trying to send to me finally got to me okay <laughs> okay so I con uh, and then I searched the genealogical message boards because you know I tried to contact the person that had the tree up they didn't respond so I so then I, I searched I found Dan, Dan and I contacted him and I got some more details about uh, this part of the family and I'm starting to work up the Skiles and the Mitchell line but I can't get as far as what they uh, is what some of these compiled genealogies say about at least George Skiles, where they, you know, claim he, you know, comes out of Norway or Sweden in the 1600s. I, I can't find any records that proves uh, who George M. Skiles' father was, or even that he was from Maryland originally. But that's a whole that's a whole different ball of wax. I don't even have limited assurance or any kind of. I, I know they traveled a lot. You know, I could read some of the historical accounts, or some people are doing, you know, studies on <laughs> how surveys were performed in the Buffalo Valley somewhere, and they happen to mention him, but, you know, a, a, a relative of him, or the, at least the family was there, but nothing like finding the records in Blount, Tennessee that supposedly is where they were born now but nonetheless so now how do we, how do I get all, all this there's a couple other factors that are, that are involved um, one important fact very very important key factor that I know is the same people is that Florence as she was calling herself when she was married to Edwin was living in Plymouth Marshall County Indiana probably in 1910 and I'm pretty sure 1910 1920 and either one of in fact I think it was 1930 as well and for, for those right in the time when James D. Skiles was paroled and gonna go live with Florence Burgess there was also a an old age pension application in Plymouth Marshall County Indiana for an Edwin Burgess wife Florence daughter Alfield and son Harold all of which Harold course his death record list his mother is Magahi. Where to get Magahi? Well, when I look at Dora's census records in the 18th 
70 census. She's age one, which was an, which was another problem that I had already solved, though. In Florence's death record, it lists her as being born in 1859, but her, but all four of the censuses that I saw with her in it, 1900 through 1930, all had her born in 1869. So I knew when I looked at the 1870 census with Dora in it, age one, that was also another reinforcing piece of information. So even though the death certificate was wrong on many counts, uh, it may even have McLeahy on there, it just isn't on the, the Ancestry.com index. You got McLeahy wrong, you got um, <laughs> uh, Ryle, the last name Ryle's wrong, the first name Leviza, you know, all those things were, were in, you know, incorrect. In that case, the, the death certificate is a part of the sufficient competent evidence, but the overall evidence as a whole constitute the sufficient competent evidence. But anyway, the fact that this James D. Skiles names a sister, Dora, and that this, this names a sister, F. Burgess. We know F. Burgess was born F. period Skiles. Or we, you know, we draw that conclusion, that inference. And because there was only one Edwin Cyrus Burgess, and I, I know Florence was married to Edwin Cyrus, and I know it's the same family. Uh, the death record tells us that. Um, in the 1880s, Florence had left her, by, the, by 1880, Florence was not living with her mother, Leviza, who had remarried a man named Begtal. Meanwhile, Moses Skiles had disappeared, or something happened to him. We, no one knows, no one could find any record of him, you know, newspapers, anything. Researchers have just assumed he was dead by 1880. Um, all of her brothers and sisters had actually gone to live with, you know, I'll leave the details of that to, for, for Dan Norton to, he's probably going to do a, an article on it, so I'll leave that to him, but basically the, the, the bottom line is, not the why, but the general idea is that all of her, his brothers and, her brothers and sisters had ended up moving to different households, changing their last names, and changing, in some cases, their first name, including uh, Dora, changed it to Florence. My record said Florence Dorothea McLee. It's in it Dora Dorothea. It's, it's a little bit enforcing. Um, but anyway, but in the 1880s, she was living with John McGaughy. Just another reinforcing piece of information, and uh, so birth years right. So, so I found her parents. It was Moses Skiles, Leviza Mitchell. I found a marriage record between Moses Skiles, Leviza Mitchell. That, that was it. So, and that I have sufficient competent evidence, even though the, the original set of records had errors in them. I have compensating evidence, and that compensating evidence is sufficient competent evidence. So I have reasonable assurance that she is my great great grandmother and that that was a 10 year mystery that was solved in 60 seconds after I read Dan Norton's message and I think that he, he was doing some work and he was looking for some descendants of some, in, some individuals that he was studying and uh, I think he went searching for um, just the name Florence Burgess, and he, he found. Uh, see, I, I took the transcription of uh, the old age application from the Marshall County Roots Web and put it in the notes of my family tree, and that probably he probably found that, and so then he attempted to contact the person that had copied my notes, I guess, and. Um, which is okay. I, I, I believe in that, especially when the evidence is sufficient and competent. By all means, copy. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just, I'm just amazed at how easily this could have never happened. I'm so, so humorous about it. So, anyway, um, that's that. Good thing for him that he did what he did. And um, that's that. So I think I've gone over a pretty good amount of studies. One other thing that I want to cover. I kind of covered Daniel. Daniel Chichester was the father of Enos Chichester. 
or, or grand, maybe grandfather actually. Yeah, grandfather. And he was born around 1706. Kind of lived around New York, but there's really no record that I've ever seen that shows who his father was. But you get a pretty good idea that he probably came. He probably is a descendant of James Chichester, who lived in Huntington. But the one thing I do want to cover is um, the, the Mary Adams that married Samuel Webb. Now, there were two Mary Adams born around the same time. Both, um, both of their baptismal records are recorded in the, in the town of Braintree, and both their marriage records are recorded in the town of Braintree. <coughs> and Mary Adams was, I believe, the daughter of either, yeah, daughter of either Samuel Adams or Joseph Adams, and the, and the, <coughs> the question is, well, which father was it? Now, a lot of the Adams genealogies will say that this Mary Adams was the daughter of Joseph Adams. Later genealogists, with some good reasoning but not solid proof, <coughs> but very good reasoning, um, and I, I will say that even if <coughs> the town of Chelmsford puts her seal on the birth record, my understanding of the circumstances the original records themselves don't don't prove out that that would be true, so that that wouldn't constitute a, a sufficient identification as to which of the two Adamses she was the daughter of was it Samuel or Joseph. So in this case, I, I do have sufficient competent evidence that she was the grandson of Henry Adams, but I don't know, I don't have sufficient competent evidence to know whether it was Joseph or Samuel. I have reasonable assurance it was Samuel and therefore only no no I have limited assurance it was Samuel therefore only limited assurance that I descend from Rebecca Graves daughter of Thomas Graves the rear admiral don't have abs you know, don't have proof just just facts and circumstances that lead me to believe that that was the case and then Could have been Joseph Adams, but that means I'm saying that Samuel Adams was my ancestor, not Joseph. That's not a that much of a big of a deal. Their lives probably weren't all that different. But they certainly had different wives. And for the most part, when you're in that kind of situation where you have sufficient competent evidence to prove up a a grandfather, but not not a father, it's it's self correcting on the paternal line, but it's not self correcting on the, on the maternal line. So just keep that in mind. It's not just because the last name of the individual can be proven out of the paternal line, don't forget about the maternal line because the maternal line is just important. And it, certainly, you know, my last name is Leone, so you know, I'm not an Adams. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, um, you know, obviously I've... You know, don't forget that in the maternal line is just as important, if not more. Um, so, well, just as important. Hopefully, uh, maybe I'll just go over some of these points. Again, just to review, okay? And I'll stop and I'll go over them. 